Research can't keep up with what works and what doesn't before there's something else. And uh, we, we have to do a lot of things by the seat of our hands and keep that student-centered focus at all times. It's not necessarily popular, but what we hope is right. About two or three years ago, there was a study that came out that said that students were having a more difficult time concentrating and even staying awake in class because they were texting all night over time. Are you still um, seeing that? Like we that absolutely question? see that. And parents will, parents will lament that they cannot get their child to school on time because they're staying up late till late at night. Um, there are solutions for that. There are solutions for that. We're talking about that. She's got some, but the, the solution is shut it off and <laughs> who's in charge of this house anyway. Mm -hmm. um, the, the, we, we see that. We also see tremendous amount of peer pressure on social media. Mm -hmm. And we also see um, the, a very curious thing, and perhaps Dr. Willie can address it, because we, we don't understand it in terms of brain development yet. And that is that students have a sort of avatar mentality that is very hard to, to grasp. Um, I, as a writer who lies here, I, I have sat in rooms with students who are in terrible trouble. And we say, this is your problem, that you're telling us you didn't do this. You didn't say this. And they say, but I'm not like that. And we say, this is your phone. <laughs> this is your phone. And this is what it says. And then there's tears and anger. But I'm not like that. You don't understand. That's not really me. You hear this and hear this and hear this and hear this. It's like their alternate existence. It is. That's why I say it. So it's an avatar behavior. That's what they're. And how beautiful for a child of any age to be able to oppress and impress or express and impress new identity and new identity limits, particularly in the preteen years. And that is where you, you have the, the clash of what's going on outside and what's going on in school and if and how school can and should address it. Okay, that's really illuminating there. Okay, can you comment on what Kim said? Uh, absolutely, and I was thinking of courage behind the keyboard. Um, and, but I think in, in addition to that, what sets all of this up, if you will, regarding, and we have slides, but there are some top concerns that uh, really set this up. Um, and, and it's number one, it's lack of parental involvement, parental, parental involvement, parental education, and parental supervision with these devices, whether it's the laptop or the phone. Um, at the end of the day, uh, we need to be, teach personal responsibility. And a lot of the pitfalls I can tell you can absolutely be avoided when you're digitally educated, digitally involved in what your kids are doing, because the consequences can be dire. Uh, and dire ranging from exposure to, of course, inappropriate content. We all know that kids see porn, they stumble upon it. But likely, you know, again, if you haven't safety enabled your digital device, you know, have your kids type, they can certainly type in a few words and see what you protect them from seeing on the, on the computer. Um, sites like Facebook, it's against a federal law called the Children's Online Privacy Protection Act for any child under the age of 13 to be on Facebook or Twitter, my yearbook. The culture in Facebook is adults intended. It's a very different experience that you have as a parent on Facebook than your child does. No, every child isn't going to go play, for example, SimSocial on Facebook. SimSocial allows your child's avatar to get naked and have sex with their friends. You're not playing that game. Smash or pass, 